Okay, hello. Um, I'm going to go over the week two um, lecture content because basically I didn't get to do it. So um, here it is. I think it'd be useful uh, to uh, go over some of the topics. Um, and then there's also going to be a video that just uh, recaps the practical work as well. Okay. So the idea for week two is to recap topics from week one uh, and then to explore the following questions is what is an interactive music system? What types of system are there? What are the components? Um, give some examples and then look to develop the week one uh, work with some further ideas. Uh, so in week one, we went over the assessment uh, and then we had some discussions about why live music is important, uh, the relationship between composition, performance and listening. So we talked about the idea that listeners are active and create meaning. Um, we talked about how we're influenced by the tools we use. And so if we build our own tools, this can have a significant effect on the creative process. We also looked at the group performance of electronic music. Uh, we looked at potential advantages to performing as a group. Uh, there were some different approaches. So if you think about the videos we saw uh, of Alvanoto, we saw Dirty Electronics, and we saw a laptop orchestra, very different approaches going on. And something really to think about is what structures can be put in place to help a group work effectively. So what what guidelines or rules or conversations might you have to help group work go well? Okay, moving on to uh, this week, uh, we we did some discussion about interactivity. Um, and... Interactivity can be thought of as the iterative process of exchanging and processing information. Um, and this is uh, from a book called Physical, no, Programming Interactivity by uh, Noble 2012. A really good book. Talks about Arduinos and uh, processing, among other things. So, iterative means something that gets uh that happens again and again okay so if you think about reiteration means something that gets done again and again um exchanging and processing so uh you're talking about two agents that are exchanging information and they're kind of thinking about the information that they're receiving each time okay so we can think of a conversation as being a brilliant example of this um it's really kind of deep uh, true interaction where it's unpredictable there's uh, processing inf information uh, that goes on and then uh, response to that information um, and there's a video kind of outlining this if you want to have a look so while you know typical controllerist performance in Ableton Live might be thought of as interactive actually interactivity can go deeper if the system that you're working with is actually thinking about what you're doing and responding to it in a novel way. Okay, and uh, some define interactive systems uh, as systems in which a human interacts with a computational agent in musical performance. So instead of having a, a conversation with another human um, that's based in language, you're having a musical conversation with a computer okay that's basically the idea you don't know exactly what the computer is going to do it has some kind of agency okay just uh this is a quote that talks about why interactive systems are a good idea so let's uh, go through it traditional instruments are hard to play if we could find a way to allow people to spend the same amount of concentration and effort on listening and evaluating and thinking about how to make music with somebody else, it would be a great advantage. Not only would the general level of musical creativity go up, 
but you'd have a much more aware, educated, sensitive, listening and participatory public. So this is the idea that if you're spending less concentration on playing an instrument, instrument you can be uh, spending more concentration on listening and making musical decisions and essentially being creative. So interactive systems allow you to do this because you do something and then you uh, listen to what the machine does back to you. Okay, so there's a lot more... Um, there's a lot more automation, but there's uh, which creates the ability uh, for you to listen uh, and not need to do so much. Uh, Todd Macover, by the way, was the guy who invented uh, Guitar Hero. But he's also a researcher at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um Okay, this is the idea that software is a uh, medium for artistic expression. Um, so we, I think we discussed this last week. Software holds a unique position among artistic media because of its ability to produce dynamic forms, process gestures, define behaviour, simulate natural systems and integrate other media including sound, image and text. These are all things that you can do to make artworks that you can't do uh, with other uh, with other media. So working with Max, for example, or um, software like Processing, Open Framework, Super Collider, all these kind of tools allow you to uh, produce dynamic forms. So like replicate processes and systems that you see in nature process gestures so interpret things that are happening in the real world uh, and actually have dynamic behaviors going on rather than fixed forms okay this is a really lovely quote by uh, Oscar Fischinger everything in the world has its own spirit which can be released by setting it into vibration okay this is uh, mirrors John Cage's idea of, of letting sounds be so and again the idea that we're not trying to control everything that we talked about in week one things do their own thing and we can build tools that can do their own thing and we can work with that rather than control that um, and that brings in the advantages that Makov is talking about um, as well as working with, you know, creating art that reflects life, perhaps. Talking of which, Lee Scratch Perry, um, a reggae producer. The studio must be like a living thing. The machine must be live and be intelligent. Then I put my mind into the machine. You've got to make the brain a living man, but the brain can take what you are sending it into it and live. So again, this idea of collaborating with uh, with your tools, not being a master over it. Just wanted to include that photo, really. Okay, the, uh, here we're looking at the system components. So an interactive system is made up of sensing, processing, response and output. Okay, so sensing is how we get data in from the real world. So it could be a mouse, keyboard. We could use MIDI controllers, video controllers, physical computing controllers like flex sensors and um, building our own buttons and um, sliders and things like that. Or we could use internet sensors, things that pick up, I don't know, stock values and things like that. Uh, what's happening on Twitter? Processing, then we make this data usable. Basically, we can create triggers and events and parameters from this data. Um, this might also involve giving the system some kind of uh, idea of the score of a piece or some kind of musical knowledge. So somehow it stores um, it stores an idea about uh, scales or rhythm. Um, in response, this is, it might be a generative response. Um, it might be, so generative is something that's um, not under the direct control of the performer. 
Uh, transformative is where you're taking the um, audio input and doing something with it. Reflexive is where you're taking the input and you're kind of you're presenting that back to the um, to the performer, uh, and you get a very highly interactive um, piece happening. Um, and sequenced is where you've got a fixed response. Basically, the response of the system is to play back something pre-recorded. Output, it can be audio, so it can be synths, it can be samples, um, it might be video, you might have robotics, you could have all sorts of other things as well. But generally, uh, we have uh, audio-visual output. So we're going to be looking at these four areas in a bit more detail over the coming lectures. Okay, and the response of the system can be used to classify the system. So uh, generative systems utilize techniques of algorithmic composition to generate output. Uh, there's an example here of Brett Patty's Node Weber, uh, where you put in various data, you run it, and it produces uh, these patterns that um, have a random or a chance element to them. Uh, transformative, transform the incoming musical input, generally from the human performer playing an instrument to produce output. Okay. Reflexive, um, mirror the performer's input. Um, and these are really good for improvisational situations. These systems also learn as well, so they might use artificial intelligence to learn about the performer's style or... Um, perform some kind of analysis which increases the complexity of its response. We're going to go over these in much more detail uh, in future weeks. Um, so other types of um, system include sequenced, uh, sequenced response, so playing back kind of fixed uh, sections of media. Um, Non-interactive aleatoric systems means basically uh, chance-based systems that are used to, to uh, create material that's then fixed for performance so they're, they're not it's not kind of live generative the generativeness happens in composition to create fixed material that then is played played back and then it's just worth mentioning that most systems end up being hybrid so they end up using uh, a kind of combination of these these techniques okay uh, I hope that's proved interesting. So don't worry if you're just starting to grasp uh, some of these concepts because we are going to go into much more detail uh, in the coming lectures. Uh, so if you want to progress to the next uh, video now, we're going to do some of the practical um, work that we covered last week.